in my quest to leave a mark on the culture and make hip hop proud, I'd like to welcome you all to another episode of The Essence, presented by yes, Tent sir. TV, powered by Validated Radio and Live 89 FM. Today, I got a, I got a Brooklyn, I got an old Brooklyn legend in the house. Not the new Brooklyn, but the old Brooklyn. Um, classic Music. hits like I Got It Made, I'm the Magnificent, The Mission, Taxing, Come On, Let's Move It, Never Go Back, Crooklyn, uh, and more, man, definitely. But um, everybody, welcome Brooklyn, New York's own special ed to the essence. Thank you for what joining What up, y'all? Yes. Peace. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. It's an honor. Yes, it's man. It's a privilege and an honor. Absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate you, bro. Definitely. Um, especially after the technical difficulties we had trying to get it done, you know, and, and it, it's, it's just, it feels good to be here getting it done today, man. Definitely. Yeah, no worries, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's start from the beginning, man. So, like I said, you was you was born and raised in, in the old Brooklyn. You know, Brooklyn's a little bit different today than it was back in the 80s. Um, yeah, it's gentrified now. I yeah. New Yorkie. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. Like the Yorkies, you know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. absolutely. You got to have a little dog now to live on, live on that. I know, right? <laughs> um. Tell me, tell me, tell me one good thing that you remember when you, or, and one bad thing that you remember about growing up in 80s Brooklyn, man. The good thing I remember is just hanging out, man, and just just experiencing life, walking around to different neighborhoods, hanging out with different crews and different people and just having fun, man. And the right. bad part is, man, shit can pop off. So just chill. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Absolutely. you got to look out for a lot of things just in life in general. Coming out the house, going down the street, yeah, going to yeah. a party. Yeah. You know, we went to some real dangerous parties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, especially in the, especially in the '80s, man, when the crack epidemic hit, man, that just like oh that yeah, shift, that shifted the, the landscape of of every neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely, and um, it tore it tore it tore us up. People just got real desperate and did desperate things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In order to get that bread. But um absolutely. Yeah, man. Um, what's your first, or should I say not your first, but your earliest memory of hip hop culture? My earliest memories of hip hop culture probably be like uh just you know, mixtapes, hip hop, um, disco beats being mm -hmm. uh being cut up like good times. Good times, good chipper chipper, good time, good good time, good 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 good. <laughs> so that's my first memories of hip hop and seeing Howie T do stuff like that. Yeah, Howie yeah. T is one of the first real active DJs that I was able to witness as a child. Mm -hmm. So I saw him and, and his brother, rest in peace to Rob. Um, I saw them DJ live as when I was a little kid, little little kid before I right, even right. knew what the hell was going on. You know what I'm saying? They was doing it so. Yeah. That's absolutely. how I learned. How we tease a legend, man. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, what were some of the hardest challenges that you had to go through, like, and, and some of the sacrifices that you had to make back then when you were trying to get a deal? Because it's much easier nowadays. You don't need a label. So what was what were some of the challenges you had to go through? Um, dealing with the business end of it and the, the, the business structure of it, what we had to accept, not um, having any experience or history in the business and not having any standardization set for us. So it was basically you accept whatever you accept, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And there was nothing that said, well, this is normal. There was mm -hmm. no, no normal. So we had to create a normal out of what we had and then turn it into what normal should look like. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, what was one of the what was one of the best and one of the worst things about being an artist in the eighties? Because you came in on the tail end of the of the golden era before we went into the nineties, and a lot of things started to shift. What was some of the good things and some of the bad things about being an artist at that time? Well, the good thing is that you know my success was based on my talent. You know what I'm saying, and so I'm I'm good with that. You know what I'm saying. Um, the one of the bad things was not having that direct access 
and exposure to certain things, mm. you know, just in terms of the distribution, your fan base, the market, you know, the, the show market, um, just merch, mm-hmm. just different areas in, of monetization that, you know, we really didn't have any idea of how these things worked at the time. Right. right. Definitely. Um, what are your thoughts on hip hop now? Like as far as the current hip hop scene in New York, who are you check? Who are you checking for? I don't know. I don't even know what the current hip hop scene is nowhere. Really? You know what I'm saying I know what the current hip hop scene is in my house. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is. I create just like they create. So just like they create. whatever they doing, I've been doing that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's what we do. That's what so that's, that's more power, right. more power to everybody coming up in New York. I hope y'all make it. Mm-hmm. And if y'all can make it there, y'all can make it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, recently we, we, you know, we lost some legends and, and, and you know, as time goes Amen. on, we're starting to lose a lot more. You know, we lost ecstasy, uh, ecstasy from Houdini. You know, we lost DMX, Black Rob, Prince Marky D. Um, though you came up with some of those artists. You came so like you were right behind. G. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Been losing them. G. Yeah. Yeah, Marky I mean, D, yeah. did how how did any of those guys, you know, not necessarily influence you, but what what any kind of memories of any of those any of those brothers that passed away? Yeah, all of them. Okay, I know I knew all of them on a personal level, mm-hmm. as an artist on an artist level. Some of them more than others, but nonetheless, I knew them all, and it's uh, it's it's. It, it leads me to believe that somewhere we being compromised because we die very young. Yeah. We only have in a lifespan of like 50, 50 50s. Yeah, yeah, man. And that's, mm-hmm. that's the trend. So mm-hmm. we have to look at that and see why that is and where, where that occurred, you know, where the lifespan change. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Is it health? Is it what we compromise? You know what I'm saying? Is mm-hmm. it, uh, and foreign something foreign put in your body, compromising your system. Why are we dying at an early age? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely definitely a question that that needs to be raised. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, like I said, you came in on the tail end. Um, you know your album, your your, al- your single came out in in eighty eight, and the album dropped in eighty nine. Um. Which which decade which decade did you like best? Did you like the eighties better or did you like the nineties better? Um, I don't know, man. That's a difficult question because there was two totally different things. I was in two totally different places, like you know, one trying to do it and coming up, and one already on and out there running around. Right. I enjoyed both, you know. I enjoyed the whole process, you know. Mm. I enjoyed my life, you know. what I'm saying so each part of my life is a whole different part of the process. So I mm-hmm. couldn't really, you know, you know, it's all, it all makes me right now who I am. Right. Got you. Got you. So you got something, you got something from both, like most of us. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Um, we definitely, we just talked about how we see a little while ago. Um, you know, I know he was your producer. He taught you a lot about music. I'm sure he taught you a lot about life in general. What's something that, that how we gave you, that you, you know, that you learned from them that you still carry with yourself today? Patience. Mm. How he sat there very patiently and produced a lot of great music. He sat there patiently and dealt with a lot of individuals, personalities, um, recorded a lot of music. Um, basically, you have to have temperament, a certain temperament for that. And you know, just in, in terms of people asking questions, being distracting, why are you working and things of that nature. So just to have, I've never really seen how he wild out or spaz out of nothing. He's always round mannered, real um, sensible, logical and happy. You know what I mean? Just trying to be pleasant, trying to make sure everybody cool. Like we don't do disruption well, right, right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. Yeah, so that how he taught me uh, how to be patient with people because it's the same situations and the same people sometimes and, and the same conversations, but I may take shit a whole different way. Mm-hmm. And I may not have the same tolerance, but he showed me that 
you know, things even can work out better if you just chill out for a little bit, listen, acknowledge what's going on and, and just, you know, go about it cool. Maybe How he's cool. Better judge cool as a like fan. That. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the coolest people I, I know on the planet. <laughs> yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, your storytelling skills, man, like like when, when people mention dope MCs, you get mentioned in that category, but I don't think you get mentioned as much as you should, especially no, coming man, out. I don't, give for, I don't give for who mentions what. Right, right, you know what right. Saying? They could talk till they blew in the face. Right, you know you're nice. That's it. Yeah, and, and not yeah. just that, but what does their opinion matter? Yeah, that's true. Who they that's telling? True. That's true. What, who they telling matter? <laughs> that's who true. they tell matter? And yeah. who, do they matter? Like, it don't, it don't really, no, nah, it don't, it don't. Yeah. But just storytelling. So no, but I do, I appreciate. Right. And, you know, I, I try hard at my craft and that's what I put into it. Right. So right. I, I, I accept and I, I'm grateful for all of the appreciation that I receive in return. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? At the end of the day, though, what I don't do is I don't, base anything on a network on an accolade on a right. award anything like that i just base it on the effect that it has in real time okay got you got you yeah so um, what people say media this that and the third really does not um you know that's one person's opinion that's the person writing the article right doing the interview mm. or the editor right right yeah i got you definitely definitely yeah. Um, but like I was saying, your 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 wordplay, you know, was unmatched at the time, especially for you know at, for the age that you were coming out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, was, you was relatively young. Um, I heard you say that you were inspired by Jimmy Spicer. You know, rest in peace to him and his storytelling. Were yeah. were were there any other artists or just storytellers in general, like like authors or or you know books that you read that that gave you that that feeling of really great storytelling? I'd just be thinking about wow shit. <laughs> Ain't no real stories. I don't really read books too much. I write. I, I write more than I read. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I um. You know what I'm saying? It, it is what it is, man. I just like what I like, and I'm very descriptive. I know what I want to do. I want to set myself aside from the next artist. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to. I want some graphic shit that you can see when I'm saying it. You know what I'm saying? I'm describing shit. I'm telling you the color they you know, whatever, mm -hmm. sleeve, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? But I'm very particular so you can see what's happening. Yeah, definitely, the lyrics, de ly lyrics is definitely meticulous without a doubt. I could definitely say that, definitely. Um, but then you gotta have an entertaining and compelling story as well. See, what I do is I, I, I say, well, well, what's gonna make sense? It's just like writing a script, writing a, a mm -hmm. show, a movie. You gotta have a point to it all, what's the point? Right. What happened? You know what I'm saying? Where, where's the, what they call the protagonist and all that stuff? Like, what, what is this all about? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or are you just going to start a story and then get distracted and go into something else? You have to have something that follows and has an ending. You know what I'm saying? You always, you always had a beginning, a middle, and an ending in all of your, all of your songs. They all, they all, you know what I mean? They all built like that. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Especially if you're telling any story because you have to have a point to it. Mm -hmm. I got mm -hmm. to. I got a moral of story, right? Any story has every story <laughs> has a moral. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So some um, people write and then they just get wild distracted. And next thing you know, they're just talking about they they you know. What kind of student were you, man, in, 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 in high school growing up, man? Um, I was just ready to go, man. I'm like, first of all, I, my school was disrespectful in the fact that they didn't even maintain it properly for the students, man. Like, mm -hmm. there was giant fucking gaping holes in the walls and the chalkboards and the room, like... Like, what is this? Like, shit, we had holes everywhere. Er Erasmus? Erasmus? Yeah, yeah, locks yeah. on everything. Ugh. Shit was like a fucked up jail. Like, Ugh. you know what I'm saying? Like, like you go to a jail, but it's fucked up. You're like, damn, why is there holes everywhere? You feel mm -hmm. me? And then, then it was like that for a while until they started doing reconstruction. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But for me as a student, I don't know. I was just like, man, looking at this shit like this is what this is what we doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I was I was chilling. I was socializing. Right, right, right. I was getting the real education mm-hmm. in life. Yeah. How to survive. I think we all got that growing up in New York. I mean, I grew up in Hollis, Queens, and I think I think we all got that from the 80s and the 90s, man. I think hell to the year. We just, we just built built a little bit different, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, what it is now is everything is automated, so they built mechanically. You know what I'm right. saying? It's not the same. You know, right now they've taken away even down to school, man. They're social activities for children. Mm-hmm. Where they're gonna get the um the the, the social behavior from? How they're gonna know how to treat people? They can't even have a girlfriend, a boyfriend, go on a date, do this, do mm-hmm. that. Like everything is so restricted now. It's, they mind fucking everybody to death. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And they t- they they're destroying children's psyche and developmental process. I think so. In a lot of ways, I think they definitely are. They definitely are. They're not. They're not. They're not allowing the kids to interact the way that we did when we grew up. You know? Right. They're, they're destroying not- their whole social behavior. You know, the ability to adapt to people, period. Mm-hmm. Now, when you go around people, you have anxiety. You don't know how to deal with people. You don't want to be around people. Now you want to be locked up, by, you know, in virtual reality. Right, right, right. I know I heard you say that. I heard you in another interview talk about how you how you got into the technology world and how you're doing tech business. Do you Do you have something in mind that would allow kids to interact better as opposed to just always being in front of a screen and not being able to interact? Well, right now, most of this stuff is technical. So what I've done is provided some, I have a nonprofit called SEAL, Special Ed Arts and Literacy. And what we're doing is we're uh, partnering with some tech rails and we're providing education, Mm -hmm. education on the technology, education on the blockchain education on cryptocurrencies and everything else from A to Z so that they can understand, participate. And it's not just for children because there's adults that don't know what's going on. They have no clue. Right. So we're providing education for all children to adults, you know? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how did you view any of the lyricists from your era, from your era? Did you view them? Did you view them as competition? Because you came from a battling background as well. Yeah. Well, I wanted to as- be different. I wanted to be different, and I wanted to be the best. Mm. So hell yeah, it was always competition because it was always based on who's the best. Right. Right. So yeah, that's my whole lifestyle. Is the best. I'm the best now. Shit. Who's the <laughs> best? Okay, I'm the best. Where they at? No doubt, right? no doubt. Okay. You got you so you supposed yeah. to always think feel that way as an artist. You oh, no, I know who I, I know I know who I am. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out who they think they are. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got you, got you. Yeah. Um I know at, at some point, you know, you got into a legal tussle with, with profile records over finances. Um how did that turn out for you? Did you end up did you end up getting what they owed you first of all and then second of we, all We had resolution, we had some it, resolution in court. Okay. That's all I can say. I don't want to get into fucking details of right. old okay. shit. No, like, I feel you. I feel you. I've been in court with many different companies over business matters. Right. And we resolve it in court. After that, that's that, you know, just that's it. Got you. And we don't you. cry, we don't cry, we go to court. Yeah, take care of it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And we exactly. try to do things the civilized way too. Right. There's been times where you, you know, you just you just go to court. Mm-hmm. That's all. Mm-hmm. Go to court. So do you do you did did you have a deal in place when you when you got that deal with profile? Was it a good enough deal for you to still eat off of those records today? Oh nigga, I eat every day. I know that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm still eating today. Yeah. But what I'm saying is. The deal wasn't that great of a deal, but I'm right. still eating. So imagine if it was a great deal. Right, right, right. I would be, you know, positioned differently. But we, I'm passing 30. I'm over 30 years now. So, Absolutely. you know, I'll get my rescission, get my shit back. And I'm moving on with my life. I'm doing mad different shit, man. I ain't thinking about that shit. Right. Other people probably want to know the story and the history, but I, right. I'm way past that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on to new money. Got you. Got you. Yeah. 
Got you. Now I know you. I know you've always been. You've been producing over the years as well. Um, what are you working on now, as far as production, or or just you know, as far as what you what you're putting out, or other artists that you're working with? What do you got? What do you got in the pipeline? Well, I have a lot of things in the pipeline as far as um, entertainment is concerned, but as far as artists are concerned, um, I'm working with some young artists. I'm also working with some seasoned veterans, getting them um, acclimated to the new age of technology and the new game and how to monetize in 2021. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing. You still you was doing some booking as well. Are you still booking for artists? Yeah, booking like I that? do. Yeah, I'm booking. I book today. I've been booking. Yeah. I book all the time. Okay. Yeah, I don't advertise because it ain't even you know. It's just people that are in the game and in the know and right. to, to artists for shows. They know that I book. And mm -hmm. actually, I tell you what, I am going a little more public with all of that because I have a new website where I do a lot of media and uh, tech consulting. It's semedia.io. Mm -hmm. as an in initial offering. Gotcha. So Semedia is S-E-M-E-D-I-A, semedia.io. So I do a lot of media, tech consulting, servicing, different areas that I've um, picked up over the years of my education in the industry. You know, I, I decided to participate fully in all kinds of activities and, and verticals. So, you know, that's where I'm at now. And I, I enjoy it because it's less, um, it's less uh, ego driven. Mm. And it's all really down about to the business and what you can and cannot do, right. what you can and cannot provide mm. and what you can and cannot monetize. And where's my money? Gotcha. That's all. I mean, where's, where, where's my involvement? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Period. Like this is real life right now. So mm -hmm. we're all, you know, positioning ourselves to do real things. No doubt, no doubt, absolutely. Um, Crooklyn Dodgers, man, another classic joint. You know, you, Master Ace, Buckshot. There was even a remix for it. Um, were you guys were you approached by Spike to do that song? How did that How did that track come about? Uh, Spike approached Tip, and Tip called everybody. Tip okay. called me, Buckshot, and Ace. And then Tip came over to my studio. We started it out. He did the beat. We started writing, doing our thing. And then we uh, ended up mixing in the city mm. with, uh, yeah, shout outs to Buckshot and Ace. And then shout outs to AC, J. Rue, and um, uh, J. J. Rue and Chubbs on the Chubs second one. On the second yeah, one, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout them out. Definitely, Crooklyn. definitely. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> definitely. Uh, I know at some point you were touring with the alumni, which was yourself. I'm still touring with the alumni. Uh, Moni Our Love, next Kwame show Moni coming Love. up. Yeah, we still touring. That's dope. All the time. Yeah. Uh, our next it. show coming up in Virginia. And then we got Bethesda, Maryland. Um, yeah, things are opening back up. So as they open back up, people are booking and things are happening. That's dope. That's Shout dope. outs to the alumni, Moni Love, Chubb Rock, Dana Dane, Kwame. Greg nice. Greg nice and the alumni yeah. the alumni there's actually a concept so it really everyone is alumni everyone that's been in there dedicated their lives to this and mm -hmm. um live this is alumni so mm -hmm. this is really just our um our idea to to unite and, and bring ourselves together as a business and not just like we friends hanging out or just doing shows together no, we're doing business together. We have a brand. We have a corporation. You know what I mean? And we're moving forward with the alumni brand. And we've been doing uh, business for some years now. Right, right, absolutely. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of our elder statesmen, as far as hip hop artists, miss sometimes they don't turn out to be financially secure as they should. I've heard people talk industry-wise about maybe starting a union or something like that to care for them if they get sick and they don't have money or stuff like that. What's your, what's your take on that? Um, my take is they should have been did that a uh, long time ago because right. there's no, well, see, when I first started, I had uh, a good CPA. So I had like, you know, a little insurance and little future stuff put to the side and you know what I'm saying? Things of that nature where artists now don't think about any of that. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And um, they need to. They need some financial planning. They need some some real they need to really sit down and understand how money works, wealth works, how to keep it, how to obtain it and um, how to invest, you know, how to do things that make sense and not things that do not make sense. Mm. Mm. That definitely makes sense right there. Absolutely. Um, As an elder statesman, you know, in, in hip hop, what, what do you try to give back to the, to the younger artists? What do you feel your responsibility is to give them or to give to the culture? Um, to know, know the process, know their worth, mm. you know, know what they might not have been told, like just to be aware. I'm into full disclosure. Right, I'm into right. understanding, you know what I'm saying? When someone has um, the information, then they can perform better, act better. Mm-hmm. react better you know what i mean so it's just about really knowing what's going on in in its entirety mm-hmm. some people know about they can rhyme but they don't know about you know publishing yeah. mechanicals royalties mm-hmm. digital rights right all right. kinds of stuff so it's about helping them with that absolutely um what would you like to see change within the culture today musically or or, or just in general when it comes to the preservation of, of our people and, and of the culture? I would like to see um, a lot change shit. I would like to see them be more responsible about the corporations that they support mm-hmm. and, and uh, fund the, the, the brands that they so recklessly provide free advertising to you know, rapping is one thing, but you can control what you're saying. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to do free advertising. You don't have to be destructive. You don't have to promote drug abuse. Mm-hmm. You don't have to promote pharmaceuticals that, you know, have nothing to do with you or any of us. Mm-hmm. We're not benefiting. We're actually being destroyed from it. Yeah. I like to see them stop promoting their personal lifestyles that don't apply to everyone, don't apply to me. Um, I would like to, you there? I'm there, I'm there. Yeah, I would like to see them stop pushing their own agenda, stop pushing satanic shit. Mm. Like nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to be a part of that. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? At least I don't, don't, don't put that in no mainstream. Mm. They're trying to put that shit in schools now mm. as a right mm. of religious belief and, edu- and educational material. They saying if they can do the national anthem and um, they can learn about God, they can learn about the devil as well. So that's really what's going on right now. Where do you think, where do you think the culture shifted? Where do you think, where do you think the shift came when that started happening? Because it was because I'll tell you where the shift came. I'm telling you, you you ain't even got to ask me no more. I'm going to tell you where the shift came. Got you. The shift came when they realized that it was effective and it worked and it had an effect and control on the people. Mm. So then they took the, that model and turned it against us with a little money. Mm. So you, you throughout history, you have these uh, people that sell out for money quick, fast and do dumb shit for money. Right. And they don't really see the result that it has down the line, um, you know, just in terms of generational, you understand? Yeah, yeah. So all these motherfuckers selling out and doing shit for a quick buck, setting you back years again, setting you back years (laughs) again, setting you back, like you really deterring the process of evolution and growth. Mm. So stop selling out for some fucking money. Like you can always make money, man. What what is wrong with people like? So what happens is they bring the bag Yep. And they tell you what they want you to do. What they want you to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that ain't that, you know, that that I never let nobody tell me what I'ma do. Mm-hmm. Even now. Mm-hmm. You understand? So I'm not into that. Don't tell me what to do and don't tell me what to say. And don't right, tell me right. what to think. Don't tell me how to feel. Mm-hmm. You understand? I'd make those decisions. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. That's how it yeah. should be. I mean, that's how it's, that's how exactly. it should be. 
But unfortunately, and unfortunately like you said, people do anything yeah. for that bag, though. Exactly. Yeah. And then they take that and they turn that around and they say, OK, you put on a dress, you put <laughs> on lipstick, you cut your hair off, you kiss these girls and boys, you do this, you do that, you take these pills, you sip this illegal substance, mm-hmm. like do dumb shit publicly mm-hmm. and make people think it's cool. Right, right. So they can jump off the cliff with you. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's what's happening. Yeah. And then it's self, it's, it's apparent. I've seen um, even the young, my, my son has a post of some kid overdosed. Mm. I'm like, he just fucking came out. How's he overdosing? Rest in peace to him. Mm-hmm. I, my condolences to his family. Right, and he's right. a, he's a, he's a, he's a uh, African-American, black, whatever. He's melanated. Right, right. But then we also, hey, and, and I'm not against anybody. Rest in peace to Mac Miller. Right. Another right. young artist mm-hmm. passed away. He overdosed as overdosed. well. Yeah. So we have a we have a, a, a history here of even young, new, brand new artists coming out and overdosing. Don't mm-hmm. you have a new deal? Don't you have uh, great parameters set up? Don't you have a, a good monetization? you know, possibility. I mean, what's going on? Why, why would you turn to enough drugs where you would die? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And that's, 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 that's always been a, a, a question to me is why would you be in a great situation and, you know, making all this money? Hold on. This month this hold on. And then, yeah, we back. Why yeah. would you be in such a great situation making all this money, living this lifestyle, mm-hmm. and then do that? You know, yeah. ruin it all, throw it away. Throw it away. Yeah. Kill yourself, literally. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's definitely crazy. Um, and like I said, rest in peace to those souls, man. It's, it's, yeah. it's terrible. Yeah, of course. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, man, what does hip hop mean to you? Hip hop mean an opportunity, an opportunity to um to monetize, capitalize, and empower mm. economically, generational wealth. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So that's what hip hop means to me, and it's a it's about an awakening also because you have to use the information and the ability, and that's what we started doing. It was the beginning, so. Yeah. spread uh spread some information mm-hmm. what's going on what's happening what is the reality right 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 and now we see the reality clearly now we have social media yeah social media is kind of like what hip-hop was hip-hop was the oral version of social media right right that's yeah. where you went to guess where you went to get the news from yeah yeah so that's what text did they took hip-hop and turned it into social media <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Definitely. Um, last question, man. What 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 can we expect from you coming up now? Like, you know, just anything that you're working on, maybe something that we didn't touch base on in the interview, anything that you want the people to know about special ed and what you got coming up. Um, yeah, man, I got a lot of um smart, interesting um things for everyone to, you know wake up to you know what i'm saying wake up to we're putting things together now so it's a lot of proprietary things that i can't really go into however we there we i, I know what's happening right now i know what's going on i see what everyone is doing mm-hmm. i just know that it can be done correctly okay. it's not being done the right way it's reckless. It's loose out there it's a wild wild west it's uncharted territory just like yeah. it always has been yeah. So it's about now, you know, steering, steering them into the correct uh, path. Got you. Got you. Definitely. So this is um this interview. I'm, you know, I'm also going to use this for uh, for Validated Magazine, man. It's a pleasure to have you on board for that as well. You know, um, when this drops, you know, I'll definitely tap in, you know, and let your people know and everything, man. 
Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you, man. I thank you for coming through on the essence, man. You you are definitely a legend in the culture, man. And it's it's good to see you still here, still prospering, still doing what you gotta do, man. And that's you know, that's that's love, man, no doubt. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Like I said, man, it's it's an honor for me to even still wanna be heard uh 30 years after the fact. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And and that's that's good. And because for me. You know, I really ain't really got too much to say. Like, right, I'm right. not talking about blah, blah, blah. I don't have no bunch of hype. Right, right. You know I'm saying? This ain't about no bunch of hype. You want to know some facts, but we can do that. Right, but right. I'm not really selling a bunch of smoke. You know what I'm saying? No doubt, no doubt. No smoke and mirrors and shit. I ain't got no game for you. No I got real, real shit. Real shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Special Ed, thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. Yes, you, sir. Man. Thank you. Likewise, man. And continue right. success. Yes, sir. And, um, yeah, just get you you in the game. Yes, sir. Just do it. Yes, sir. My brother. Amen. All right, peace. One love. Peace.